Hello, 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 hello. How are you? Hello, 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 hello. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Anita. Can you see my background? I can perfectly. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, you are really getting fancy. I know. I was struggling with uh, some of the stuff on our best practices about, so it said vocabulary of the environment is labeled and utilized. I thought, oh, this might work. Every once in a while, you kind of turn into the invisible man. If you lean back, I like lose half your head. <laughs> oh, okay. Good to know. Yep. But you can see the green screen thing, right? I can. Okay. Welcome to secondary EL process, prologies, pedagogy, vocabulary of the day, Kelpa. Yep. And it's it's not mirrored, right? No. Okay, good. I got it off. <laughs> I played with that for a little while. So you have to teach us how to do that. Yeah. Let's see, I gotta go this way. So at my desk I have to move like if Let's see, if I move this way, I move, I'm doing it the opposite. My head moves the opposite on the screen. So. Yes, I figured that out this morning. Yeah, it is opposite, it's kind of odd. Good morning, how you doing, Cynthia? Yeah. Hello. Welcome back to the real world. It's so nice to see you guys. Yeah, yeah. it's good to be here. <laughs> Can you hear her all right, Anita? I can perfectly. I mean, you've got a soft voice anyway, but I can adjust my mm -hmm. volume. You're nice and clear. I can't hear Cynthia too well. Oh. I, can hear, I can hear Cynthia perfectly. Okay. Okay, I will be right back. Sounds good.
So what's new, Cynthia? Uh, went to the school yesterday, got some planning done. Um, I helped Lene with some of her questions and we just went over the books and all of that. Great. And um, Jill called her and they went over some stuff too because Jill has done the stuff that she's going to be doing. So they got to collaborate a little bit. So that was oh, good. really good. Good, good, good. Yeah. It seems like she's going to be teaching um, ESL 1 and then Scott wants her to do pull in. for two classes because the two classes that Susie was teaching were ELA, like normal shelter language uh -huh. arts, and she's not certified for that. Okay. So, well, that'll work, yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Good morning, everyone. On. Good to see you all. Back. Morning, Alyssa. Hey, Pam. Morning, everyone. Hey. Lisa. I'll let you know, Roger, that I've been playing phone tag with the principal for about three days. And if, if she happened, I told her I was going to call her after this PD, but if she happens to call me during it, I might sign off and take it. Okay. So I hadn't started uh, Pear Deck yet. Let me see how it'll work today. Fingers crossed. Hey, Angie. Ah, okay. Not? Not. Ugh. So we'll go to plan B. That's really too bad because Oh, that's I'm sad because you were doing some cool stuff on it. Well, we'll still do it. It's just I'll have to do it from my personal account rather than the school account. Oh, okay. Of all the day, of all the times for it to stop working. Yeah, that's what they. So that's all right. We have a little bit of time. Make sure I have the freshest one. Okay, so just go there and say I have last word. Smart. Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. 
Oh, shoot. What happened? Hey, Lene. Morning. Thank you for putting the uh, note Genetics. with your name. Yeah, you know, wait. Okay, get my volume up. Yeah. New thought, group of I, friends. I have to yeah. teach yeah. my name, you know? Yeah, I'm probably used to that. this will work. If not, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, it won't be near as fun. Are you having problems with your personal <clears throat> hair tech too? Oh, I, I worked on it last night, so I had to copy and paste. So it worked fine yesterday. Of course. Back in the good old days, back when things were way different. Yeah, it worked fine. So I worked with. So Alyssa did I. I worked fine. Back I showed in Alyssa the, the other day, and then it stopped working. That's how magic I. Yeah. Mary had troubles with hers yesterday too during uh -huh. ELA training. Yeah, so I guess. Um, yeah, it was the whole district, and it's not working this morning. I heard about it from your lovely wife, Dr. L. Yeah, I heard about it too. <laughs> I thought you might have. Yeah, she's not. I mean, she's using it. She's not super confident with it. She's got a lot of good things to say, though. She really likes it. It's just a frustrating thing when it doesn't work when you need it. Well, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening right now. Weird. So. I'm sending an email to Billy, see if she has any idea when it might be back up. Hey, Mena. I'm not doing a good job admitting people. Let me make sure. Well, I was going to say, while we're all waiting, I just want to be sure to introduce Lene. Um, am I, is it Hasek? Ho, oops, there you go. Hosek. Hosek. Mm -hmm. Hosek. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to. Thank okay. you, Anita. Today, Hosek is our newest um, ELL person. She is going to be at Eisenhower with Cynthia Hopp. And we're really excited to have her, and we just want to give her a big round of welcome. So thank you. We're excited to have you here. Yay! Thank welcome. you. Bye. I'll just tell you. I'll tell you guys how old I am. <laughs> Philip is laughing. I taught Philip in high school. I mean, uh, I was around. He's my son's age, I, or uh, something. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Very cool. It's awesome to know him here and work with him here. I wish I that's could follow that up by saying that I'm in like my early 20s still, but not. Yeah, that, <laughs> that would be nice if you would do that. Sorry. <laughs> I, um, I Facebook a couple of my students that I taught in Denver Facebooked me um, last week and I was their third grade teacher. One of them is completely bald and the other one's gray. And I told my husband, when your students are bald and gray, woo wee, that's really saying something. So yeah, I just turned uh, 62 a couple days ago. So what can Happy I say? Birthday. Time flies when you're having fun. Happy birthday. Thank you. I've been told recently that you should always, you know, give your age higher. Because if you pretend you're, you know, younger, people are like, ooh. You know, 29, what happened? You know, well, if you say you're older, everybody's like, oh, you're looking great for that age. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Philip, I was so freaked out about turning 50 
that when I was 49, I told everybody I was 50 that whole year so I could get used to it. And then when I actually turned 50, it didn't bother me so much. So that's a nice okay. little trick for all you youngsters to put in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. What are you kidding? I'm already 55, right? No. <laughs> great for 55. Yeah, you sure do. Real great. I'm not buying it. Now we got my mom turned 65 here in July and then my parents moved to Topeka. So they're here with us now, which we're excited about. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's Chris is an only great. child and my, I have one brother who lives out in LA. So it's nice to have my parents close to us. Are they from Topeka or they just get brave enough to move here? No, they're from Northeast Nebraska, small town, Northeast okay. Nebraska. It's not that different. Okay. Um, they were military for a lot of their years and moved around a lot. And they've been in Nebraska um, on an acreage for the last, Oh, 15 anyway. And uh, it was time. It was time. Sell the acreage and, and come live close to the grandkids. That's nice. Yeah. That's great. That's been our big excitement this summer. Yeah. Built in babysitter. Mm -hmm. That's funny that you say that, Alyssa. My parents live in Emporia and they keep telling me when they retire, they're moving to Topeka. So I'll have parents closer too. <laughs> It'll be and nice. You know, we've never had them that weren't just hours and hours away, you know, uh, we had been two and a half hours here uh, to their place, and that was the closest we've ever lived. So the whole idea that they're like 10 minutes away across town is just, it's a little dumbfounded. <laughs> it's really fantastic. <laughs> when, we, when we moved back to Topeka, we lived in Denver for about 15 years. We moved back to Topeka. I can remember telling my son Spencer, he was just getting ready to turn five. I said, come on, we're going to go see Bubby and Gampy. And he was taking forever, and I went in his room, I said, what are you doing, let's go. He was packing a suitcase and grabbing his Barney and some coloring books and stuff. I said, they're 10 minutes away, Spencer. He just hadn't processed it yet. I, I will say it's pretty nice having grandparents in town because I just drop my kid off and disappear for hours. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. From what all, what, from I what like I've her heard, more than you, so that's no problem. I was going to say, from what I've heard from Dr. Roger, he loves it. Loves every minute of it. So, well, folks, we're experiencing technical difficulties. Um, I can't get Paradox to work any place now. Hey, Phil. Is, I have... Go ahead. I'm sorry, just a quick side note to Philip. I'm going to be in a U.S. government class this year. Okay. Is there any way that I could be a co-teacher in one of your Google classrooms just so I can see what you're doing? Yep. That would be awesome. Thank you. I'll add you now. Um, I was going to ask, what are the other required classes that we need to have for ELL? <clears throat> because the only one that we saw was this one under... ELL and there's nothing that said required. We went to the one that is EL, ELA for um, planning. Uh-huh. Uh, but we, there, I couldn't see anything else that was required for us. So, so we didn't make anything more required. So This afternoon, um, I was told to join the ELA team again as well. So there is a no red ink. There's something at one o'clock. Let me pull it up. I think I wanted to go to the new Sela one. Yes. So yeah. I, I, my advice, because I've watched all the videos and stuff. Um, Which ones the, are the good ones? The new Zella and the no red ink. They, they work okay. perfectly with what we're doing. And there are... Um, Leslie Nilsson, the social studies person, has done the basic New Zella stuff, mm -hmm. or New ZLA, um, which shows you how to set up classes and those sorts of things. And every student in the school has an account, so you can link them to your Google Classroom and make assignments and those sorts of things. So it's, that part's really great. The no red ink, since we're on that, um, it looks like you may need to be a co-teacher with a language arts person. So if you know who your student's language arts teacher is, they can make you a co-teacher and you can access all those. Um, but Roger, is that one for uh, ninth through 12th grade though? I don't think it's for middle school, is it? What's that? The no red ink. It starts at fourth grade. Yeah, it's for middle school too. That's what they do. Oh, is it? Okay, maybe it's a different it. one. 
maybe okay. they're not. But because I asked if we could have our own classes in No Red Ink, and I don't think we can have our own classes yet. But we can use it if we're a co-teacher and you, make assignments you, from it. You can use it in your own class. You can set up a class in No Red Ink. Yeah, like I, all, all my classes are on there. The one thing they said is kind of what you said. If, if they're in a language arts class, like like at high school, we have sheltered language arts, right? So I would be running their No Red Ink. But if you were an ESL teacher, like most of us, um, they recommended you set up as a co-teacher so you could see their progress. And then like you could still have them work on No Red Ink in your class. It would just be from their language arts class. Does that make sense? Mm hmm um, but that's what they recommended. And then they said, if you like, they don't want us to overkill it either though. So if we are yes, so well, people like try not to do it every day. Cause they're probably doing it at least twice a week in language arts. Yeah. And the other thing is it's not real clear to me cause there's two sections of the no red ink. There's the conventions, which is what we do. It's the grammar and the mechanics, punctuation, capitalization, all those kinds of things. And then there's the writing part. Where they turn in essays. Yeah, and then in the training, that's what they suggested. So um, they said usually language arts, they would do a lot more of the writing because then you as a teacher can call them over and fix it and stuff like that. And then for our class, it would make sense to do all the, it's, they're not games, but it feels like games. Mm -hmm. um, they're like practices with like capitals and the right forms of there and to and conjugation and all, all kinds of stuff. So if you're teaching the ESOL elective, please attend any no red ink or new ZLA sessions you can. Um, and all that stuff, lots of them are pre-recorded. So I went through, again, it's Leslie Nelson. So it says social studies, but she's the one that the videos I watched her um, do were really just how to set up a class and how to uh, use the different materials. It's, it's the very basic level. And um, I haven't been through all of Mary Casey's new ZLA stuff. Yeah, I know, I know Leslie has both the basics, which is a nice short video. It's really, right, yeah. Um, and then there's like the advanced, like there's the social studies specific ones she has too, but she kept- Yeah, there's one on, is it DBQs or something to that effect? But it, it was, I thought it was really good also because she showed how, um, I can't remember all the details, but how, how, weren't there some slides already made on somebody? And so she brought those in and from them and set up lessons and yeah yeah i'll say a lot of these pre-recorded pds have been knocking it out of the ballpark like they've yeah, been they're really good the ones that i've been doing okay so here's my issue the uh yesterday pear deck was working fine in the morning then it wasn't in the afternoon and then i went to my personal account and used pear deck um with anita what time did we do that noon it seemed like it was more like two but i'm not sure okay oh yeah because it was around noon and it worked fine on my personal account. Now it won't work at either place. And that was a big part of what we were going to do. But I think we better get started. I was going to say, if you want to let me go ahead and do my little part, because I have to pop into the, um, I have to pop into other PDs okay. this morning. So if, um, if you want to go ahead and do your, oh, go ahead and put your uh, PowerPoint up and yeah, you may have had something before me. No. We'll see how well I know, if I know what I'm doing with um, Zoom now, because <laughs> I've seen some funny Zoom things lately. All right, take it away, Anita. Okay, well, first of all, just welcome everyone. And if you came late, um, we have a brand new person that we're glad to welcome, and it's Lene Hasek. And she's gonna be at Eisenhower with Cynthia, and we're just really excited to have her on board. Um, um, Where did it go? There it is. Lene, did you want to tell a little bit about yourself and a little bit of your background? And um, what's to tell? I told earlier if people are new that I'm kind of old. Philip, I know Philip from when he was in high school. I think he's the same age as my son. We haven't figured that out yet. Um, but I'm so excited to see him. Now. Yeah, so oh now you know how old I am. Um, old, and I've been in this business a really long time, but I've been away from public school for about 15 years. Been at KU, been overseas. KU department is um, dwindling. 
quickly. So here I am back at public school. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Welcome. We welcome you. you. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the um, Kelpa update. And I think I let everyone know if you got that email, um, they're saying that to get Kelpa store scores by December is optimistic. So, yeah, so we don't know when we're going to get them. So right now you just treat all your students as if they um, were where they were, except that you should have no transition students. All transition students should move to monitor. But other than that, everybody stays exactly where they are until we get the results back. And then anyone from last year that passed is going to go on transition the rest of this year and then we'll move them to monitor next year. Any questions about that? Okay, so the next thing I wanna tell you, um, how many of you by raise of hands have met Dylan Pryor already, who did a lot of work with our migrant students? Um, Dylan is now, we have completely lost all of our migrant funding. It just all went bye-bye. Yeah, it's, they just, yeah, they went, we went from like, oh, I don't know, 80, 75, 80,000 a year to zero. Uh, so um, Dylan was mainly our, in charge of the migrant program and the migrant students and families. And he still is gonna be continuing to make sure to check up on those families. But he is also gonna be the liaison now for all of the EL paras in the district. And he already reached out to all of them that ordered their uh, Chromebooks. He, he contacted all of them. He made sure to meet them to make sure they got them set up correctly. And he really enjoyed it. He's bilingual, he can help with um, home visits. He loves doing home visits. He's glad to come to the school. He is glad to help with parent-teacher conferences with interpreting. So, uh, but I think it's kind of a nice, I think sometimes paras aren't sure. They know you guys are swamped and busy, but sometimes I feel like they just aren't sure how to handle maybe a parent issue or maybe they could use some help or if they want to do a home visit, if they could have someone go with them or something like that. And I thought Dylan would be the perfect person for that since he's has some time on his hands. So I sent the contact information, his contact information in an email, but if you need it again, just let me know. But he is super excited to be doing this and he, his passion is really um, contacting, being kind of a liaison between the families and the school district. So he's, you can reach out to him if you ever need him to do that for you either. Okay, uh, the addendum, be, the addendums are actually due to Billy tomorrow, which we always know is optimistic. But um, all of you guys get a $500 um, EL addendum. So make sure you've signed that already. And if not, talk to your office and let them know you need for them to fill out an EL addendum. Your principal needs to sign it. You need to sign it and then just stick it in a pony to Quentin Heights to me and I'll take it from there. If there's any part on the addendum that you guys or your office does not know how to fill out, like the account strip number or the amount, that's okay, I'll take care of that. Just make sure you get your name and your number. Um, any, All the information you can fill out, fill it out and get it to me just as soon as you can. Let's see. Um, coaching, I don't know why I put that down. Roger, I think you're gonna talk to them about coaching, aren't you? Yeah, so we put that down that uh, coaching will be virtual for the time being. Yes. So, um, it, but it worked really well. Yeah. At the end of the last yeah. quarter. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I really like doing the virtual coaching. Um, I thought it was really good for lesson planning and those sorts of things because you can share your screen and go through things. Um, so, anyway, anytime you want to do virtual coaching, let me know. Uh, the only time I don't have is uh, first hour, first hour on the high school schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and I really do want to encourage, I just, um, some silver linings have come out of this black cloud in that we have found some better ways to work and function and reach more people. So, um, I really want to encourage the virtual coaching even beyond this, you know, even, we, even when we go into phase two, I think I would um, encourage to continue doing that. I think it's a really good way to go. It's a safe way to go, and it's a way to reach a lot of people in a shorter amount of time without all the driving and going to schools and trying to find people. So, and then before I sign off, 
Ken, I would like to ask the middle school teachers what their understanding is of what the instructional options are. Because I've been visiting with principals, but different principals seem to have, and what I'm talking about is virtual, remote, um, and um, hybrid. And middle schools do not have the micro class option. Is that correct? Okay, maybe we could start with, let's start with Pam. Pam, what does instruction, instructional choices look like in phase one and phase two for Landon? I think they're the same for all the middle schools. Uh, phase one is completely remote. Mm -hmm. So we'll be teaching probably, you know, from our um, classrooms, but everybody will, will be remote. Phase two is hybrid uh, with sixth grade only coming into the building and uh, a group comes on half of them come on monday and tuesday and while they are there we are teaching the others remotely at the same time i don't quite understand how that's going to work yet in terms of like cameras and audio i, I don't quite get that but that's what's happened but that's what happens and then on wednesday and that's on a block schedule so we have odd numbers classes on Monday and even number classes on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we have all of our classes for, you know, 45 minutes, but it's all remote. It's a cleaning day at the school, so there are no students. This is in phase two. And then Thursday, Friday, um, we would have the B group come into the building and the A group would be remote. And um, then, um, and the same thing, Thursday, odd, number blocks friday even number and then um phase three would be all the kids will be back on that hybrid that same hybrid rotation so say that years. again what was that last thing you said phase three would be the seventh and eighth graders would also come back but still hybrid so 50 percent no more than 50 percent of the kids in the building at one time i think you know for the rest of the year if we even get that far mm -hmm. any other middle school teachers hear anything different that's pretty much how it was at Eisenhower, from what I understand. Okay, it says the same way. Yeah. 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 Um, same so, thing for French, too. So yeah, then. and I think, Anita, the micro classes are only for elementary, I believe. Yeah, they are. Okay. They are, yeah. But I just, I visited with a couple principals, and they had, they said their, what they were telling me was different from each other, but... Um, um, Kelly Hoffman, who's in charge of middle school principals, gave me exactly um, what you gave me, Pam. So um, maybe that principal just was confused for that day or something. But anyway, I just want to make sure. And also, um, the other thing I wanted to say is how it went on their schedules or wherever, I guess maybe on Tyler Sis, is what, kids who take sheltered classes. How are those labeled? Because I just heard from the state and there's this thing called counting kids and counting kids is what determines who your ELs really are according to the state, how many, you know, that kind of thing. It's the official, official um, platform to keep all student information. And they have added a number this year for sheltered students who are taking sheltered classes. So I'm trying to make sure I get that information to demographics to put into counting kids. Will he be able to pull that down from Tyler Sis or not? Well, and I'm just, it's been a little bit of an issue at Chase because I wanted to have it say sheltered language arts. And I, if I understood correctly, um, our counselor told us that, uh, he couldn't do that because uh, they'll know that it's a sheltered, wow. but it won't record it as a sheltered. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I think that information, Anita, would be really important uh, for Kelly and our counselors to get. Yeah, I think it has to be changed from on the Hill, doesn't it? Well, like, Ro I, think, I think Roger, I think when Roger and I talk about it now that I think about it, I think there is some issue with, it, it has to do with the program studies and the state recognizing what this is and that is now that the state is officially recognizing shelter, maybe something could be due. It probably wouldn't happen this year, but I guess maybe what you might want to do is just make sure you let me know um, 
I'll get back to you later because I don't want to make this too labor intensive, but I might have to just ask the, questions for me. What is the question? Do you mean the classroom code? Yeah, the course code can't change. It's still, right. It's still language, sixth grade language art. Okay. So, so is that, are you asking change? it for the, the class code to change? No. Well, I think that's kind of what Suzanne Donnelly is talking about, but I don't think we can change that class code. I was just wondering, is there anything in Tyler Sis that it can pull into counting kids to show that that's a sheltered class or is that something we're no. going to manually do? Okay. The, the classroom code is different at, at high school. Like if it's sheltered, it has the number and then it says AS. And if it's a regular class, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't have that. Okay. It, I don't think it does that at the middle school level. Like okay. uh, here, up in the chat. This is at the high school one, like our codes, if they're sheltered, they have that AS next to it instead of just being numbers. Okay. Thanks. I probably could have just I've saved everyone time and just talked to Roger about this, but it just popped in my head. Um, and I, I think it made that code alteration disappear sometime into the year. Like it'll be like that, and then they'll alter it at some point. But it's there while we're doing enrollment stuff. Huh. So I guess the time I'd really need to know is well, because it has to. I'll talk to Aaron Kip and Roger, and we'll get it figured out. But just if we end up asking you for that information manually, that's why. Anita, I have a question about uh, sheltered, not just for language arts, but for like math and science. Um, we're getting a few more teachers in our building who are ELL certified, mm -hmm. and some of them are math teachers, and I think we have one science teacher. And I don't know, is, is it helpful to, to our program as well as for the kids to kind of have a sheltered science and a sheltered math class? At a Definitely. Grade level. It really is, but sometimes that doesn't depend just on endorsement. Sometimes it depends on the teacher. So, um, whether they're willing to do it or not. Yeah. And whether, yeah. And whether it's, whether it's, a, whether or not it's a good fit and if they're willing to do it. Um, okay. That's something that you could, we could talk to Kelly about and mm -hmm. get her. So those on teachers it. who are certified, it's kind of voluntary whether they work with. ELL kids or not? Is um, that what you're saying? Well, it's we'll a get, lot of it has we'll to do with scheduling. Minutes. What's that? We'll get their minutes. I mean, it'll count. And okay. when you talk about sheltered, you're talking about grouping kids together. Right. So, uh, for instance, their Topeka High doesn't want to group kids together all the time. They want the students, the ELs, to be with other students because what can happen is if you have a math teacher and a science teacher and a language arts teacher, then it's really just tracking. They'll see the same students all day long. Right, so that, that would be an argument against it. Yeah. So, okay. but the. I just think it would help our program, and I think it'd be good for kids to be able to go at a slower pace and figure out what's going on and all that kind of stuff. So. Well, we hope the teachers um, will anyway. do that also. The other thing is, I don't know if you have enough kids to make classes. If you have five kids, you can't make a separate class. There's not enough teachers for all that. And the other yeah. thing that happened in the past is they would put all the ELs with the SPED kids, and that wasn't yeah. a good fit either. Right. So I, I those are some of the happening. issues that have to be talked through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I just sent you guys a link to the uh, slides, so you should be able to pull up the slides on your computer. Um, it'll be in your email. Let me know if it didn't work. Uh, let me look. Just want to make sure. Yeah, still in death spiral. So the spiral of death or whatever it's called. Doesn't want to work. I I just got an email from Travis about Pear Deck. Hold on, let me look at it. So disappointed because I thought I had the workaround by going outside of 501, but maybe it's a Pear Deck. I, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, on the list here, also we have uh, voluntary weekly Zoom meetings. If you want to send me in the chat to just me, what time would work best for you? Um, so we'll kind of use chat instead of how I was going to do it with um, Pear Deck. Um, if uh, we really liked them, um, 
as far as our department and i know anita loved it because she got a lot more feedback than she normally does from the trenches from what you guys are doing um, and again they'll be voluntary roger i'm sorry what was that for i was looking at the slides what was that for so last uh last spring on once a week we would get together in, uh, voluntarily it's not a you don't have to come to it and right, just right. chat about what's going on okay. and we thought it worked really well um and i think probably what will happen is this first few weeks it'll we'll definitely need to do it as we figure out what's going on and then maybe less so later on but um it's voluntary we're not uh, anita's not requiring anybody to attend a meeting once a week so if you can okay. put in the chat to me what time would work <laughs> i am not available at midnight sorry anyway uh that'll work fine yeah um and the reason i sent you the slides you don't have to open it but uh, it has hyperlinks to the different documents so when i'm going through this you can you can get hold of them um is there anything roger else you need? yeah Roger, quick newbie question. I'm uh -huh. sorry. Does the district use H to, for Thursday? Or uh, I haven't you know, seen that till Monday? now, but yes, that's what they put on the document. So right, okay. Just so yeah. I'm consistent. I've never used H before. I've always used R, so I'll groove in with you. Okay. That sounds good. Um, yeah, everything's new. Well, wow, we have a special guest. Mary Casey just said she was going to join. So didn't expect her. That's true. So, all right. Uh, Anita, did you have anything else? Can you think of anything else we need to get out there? So we're kind of going out of order, but so be it. Um, let's go backward. Roger. Uh-huh. I have a question for Anita, if I could. Um, Anita, if we find some resources for like distance learning that we think might work well with our kiddos, can we, I don't know if there's money in the budget or not to uh, be able to order those things. It would depend on what you're talking about. Um, we're, they're discouraging us. We're encouraging using, continue to use National Geographic okay um and the district overall is discouraging um spending too much money on things that we're going to be using in the short term but if there's something that you think is going to really enhance what you need to do um let me know we okay. ordered headphones with microphones for everyone and i ordered those i don't know may april and i'm still waiting the first batch that came in were broken Oh, and we're, I think everybody in the world's trying to get them right now. We try to get good, really good quality ones. So we'll get those to you. If there's things like that that you think are helpful, let us know. Um, something that's not extravagantly important, I mean, ex expensive, that's fine. Um, but overall, they're trying to discourage us from getting things we won't be using for the long term. Okay. Okay. Uh, real quick because we're supposed to go through the norms. Um, and I'm just curious, have, have you been in other sessions where it said you had to keep your camera on? No. No. I, I, I was handed these, so I wasn't sure about that. I was just curious about it. Um, I know they are asking the kids to have their camera on. And yeah. I mean, yeah. I, think it's a, I think it's encouraged. I mean, our principal always asked us to turn on our camera. Yeah, I think we're kind of similar to Pam. They would like us to keep the video. Okay, yeah. Anyway, uh, we know, well, we pretty much know each other. So, I, I mean, uh, we've seen each other. I haven't seen Lene face to face, but everybody else I know. So I know what you look like. So if you don't want to have your camera on, that's fine with me. So uh, <laughs> this is where we went out of order. But uh, in the chat, what do you think we're going to talk about today? Let's see how good you guys are at this, figuring out what we're doing.
there's a hint it should be by my head if you can see my screen here hi mary good to see you yeah Good to see you all too. Sorry to be late. I had a couple of fires this morning that I had to put I did out. not expect you to be here. So this is good. Well, I've got an IEP at nine, so I'm going to have to dip out pretty fast. Okay. But I'm going to turn this wanna, over to you I then. I did want to pop in and certainly ask you to share the slideshow with me. Um, are you okay. going to do a takeaway share at the end of this, Roger? Okay, I will. I, I took you off my list. Do you want me to leave you on my secondary list? Would you please? Okay. I didn't want you to be overwhelmed with my nonsense so um, it's not it's not nonsense i need to know what's going okay on. So hey since you're here uh, i know with um news ela the teachers can set up their classes for their esol elective for no red ink is it similar or not um no red ink you can set up classes but the access for that is through clever and so you can assign through Google Classroom, but it's not as great as uh, Newzella just in terms of um, synthesizing all of that. It doesn't, it doesn't interact as well as Newzella does. Okay, because when I talked to Paige yesterday, I don't know if she understood. Anyway, she said that the EL teachers would have to co-teach or something like that with a language arts teacher. But maybe so she thought, are you, are you maybe she thought we were just talking about push-in. Oh, so you're asking me if EL teachers just have their own accounts that they can set up. Yes. That's what you're asking me. Is that possible? Um, it should be. Let me email our, um, what do they call them? Our account success specialist. I'll uh, email that person and just say, hey, we can, we can get these teachers set up on this as well, right? Um, I would assume so. Okay, great. So I'll check it out. It's a really nice resource and it does, like we've got it down to third grade. So it does really basic grammatical and writing skills as well. So um, it's, a, it's a great resource. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'll okay, Pam, do you have your hand up? It, it seems to me like for both New, New ZLA and No Red Ink that it would be beneficial to link into um, another teacher's account simply because, you know, they're going to be collecting data and there's no reason for us to take, you know, take students through the same diagnostics, uh, you know, and then we can see what they, you know, we can wed those to the practice and the assignments it is am i reading that wrong so roger are you interested specifically in the data or are you interested in teachers in esol electives being able to utilize those for those classes i was understanding the latter from me too oh. and okay. i think the the diagnostics work across whatever platforms right yes yeah so pam it's not so if, if you assign it would allow you to assign a in New Zealand, an article that they don't have in the other classes, and then it would it would uh, level it to their level and that sort of thing. So I, and you can also assign it through Google Classroom. So it would be graded, and everything would come through Google Classroom in your Google Classroom for that that time and those students. So it's going to make your life easier. If I have my own accounts. Well, you if already have their... all teachers have a, an account to New Zealand, as far as I know. It's the no red ink. I'm not sure about. Okay, so I mean, would um, I, I'm wondering if having the accounts, you know, going through the other teachers, if that would uh, eliminate me assign duplicate assignments, like assigning the same thing. Um, that I don't know. Mary, do you have any idea about if if a elective teacher assigned the same assignment as a social studies or a ELA teacher? That's what a would good happen? question. If, if, 
if they're accessing no road ink in two different classes i'm not really sure how the platform if it looks at that as one student and those i think she's asking about news ela so let's say it was the same article and it got assigned in two different classes they do they do talk to each other because philip and i had each other's data last spring right are you Kent? i thought you were asking about no reading that's what i thought too well i i guess i'm asking about both of them um i i'm just i'm always care trying to be careful of like not giving the same assignments or doing the same thing in my elective classes that they're doing in language arts and have to support that but i, I don't want them to say oh we did this in this other class um, and so i'm wondering if like having all the accounts set up through the language arts teacher and then me just being able to ex you know be an, a co-teacher so that i can assign and and assess other things that that, that teacher is not assigning and i can see the data as well from how they're doing in the other class or at least the program <laughs> uh, uses that data when they're you know looking at their progress in what I'm assigning to. Um, I, so I don't know. Pam, I know with Mozilla, if you share a student with another teacher, uh -huh. you're going to be able to see that student's activity in both classes. You're going to be able to see um, those kinds of things in both classes. Okay. I, Even through my own account, we, yeah. we can have separate accounts. So Philip I can and I could see our shared students and what they had been doing in both classes in terms of accessing um, articles and finishing assignments and things like that through okay. Mozilla. Um, okay. Philip and I could see that last year. And so that's based on the student's Google account. And if, if, it's, if that student's in two classes, then, both, then you can see what they're doing in all of their classes. I don't know if No Red Ink does that same thing, but I will ask about that okay and and roger i will also ask about um getting el teachers set up with okay. red ink separate um, ink account just out of curiosity um mary or roger does no red ink have uh speaking and listening activities in there as well for ell kids no no okay Mary, yesterday in the Nerd Inc. training, that's what I asked the lady. She said, if you want to see data for kids, you have to co-teach with whoever, or else we're um, like they would start at the base level with us as well. But when you do the co-teaching, you can assign different activities for them to do. Um, and then you can still like link it to your classroom and all that kind of stuff. But and then, but you're right with the newsella like it it inherently because it's google and not clever like you can see everybody's stuff so like pam if you assign something it'll say like oh this kid's already done this yep um yeah hopefully yeah. That cool that up. it will but i'll still ask about um teacher account el teacher account for no reading it's got a lot of good stuff but it is all it's grammar it's writing um there's no speaking in this component to that well, we talked about already, I think we may have more of a grammar focus in our electives than they might in the language arts classes. I mean, I'm not sure about that, but anyway. Roger. Yeah. Um, I've got Travis True is trying to get in there and see if he can tweak stuff. He wants to know specifically what he hasn't gotten any other complaints from the district. And he's wondering specifically what is uh, Pear Deck doing? It won't let me log in on either of your, your either yeah. your personal so when or your I district click, account. Here, I'm going to share my screen and you can see what it's doing. Okay. So I should click here. Tell I want instructor pays. It'll probably work now that you're on here. Yeah. See, it should just automatically go in. It doesn't recognize me. So then when I click, this doesn't usually happen. I don't usually have to tell it which account. Okay. See? So it says maybe you're logged in in Pear Deck with the wrong account. I'm going to take a picture of that real quick. Okay, thanks. 
-hmm. Okay, Mary, is there anything else? I know you have to run. So is there anything else you think we need to know about that would be helpful? Um, I can't think any, of anything right off the top of my head right now. There are some resources coming in that were purchased for the dyslexia initiative that are very cool. Um, one of them is called Wilson Just Words, and it works very heavily with uh, segmenting words and uh, you know, working with morphemes, uh, those kinds of things, uh, the morphology of words. If I can figure out how that can be utilized, some of it digitally, uh, that might be a resource because um, our dyslexia initiative has been pushed back a year. We are not starting that. Um, all, all of those deadlines that we were given this spring on the dyslexia initiative have now been pushed back a full year. But when I did the training for Wilson Just Words last week, um, I could see all kinds of wonderful possibilities for our ELs with that particular program, um, just because of the way that it deals with breaking down words and syllable types and morphology and that kind of thing. So uh, stay tuned on that. I, I don't think there's going to be a huge use for it in the building and in the buildings. And if, if we can get a hold of that and figure out how to utilize it in our remote setting, I think that might, might be a nice resource, especially for our lower proficiency. Kids. What's the name of that program? It's called Wilson, Wilson Just, Just Words. Words. Are you familiar with it, Alyssa? Um, only, only cursorily. I was just going to ask you, is that all on paper right now? None of it exists in an electronic format at the moment. Um, there are some electronic resources, but most of them are, here are some electronic documents that you can print. Got it. It's, it's the manipulatives that I'm really excited about. That are such a core yeah. part of that program where students can actually use these tiles and build words based on yeah. the rules of the of the syllable that you've taught or the right um, yeah. the, the, the rules of the phonemes that you've taught that is missing from this. So if we could figure out a way that students could actually build those as a teacher is demonstrating those or is right that that I think could be what is I'm sorry I don't mean to interrupt you. What is the physical product that you have on campus and is that only at T High or Central Office or do buildings have that? So it's my understanding, I'm, I was not in on the purchase of any of these um, resources. So I'm in a learning curve on these myself. So it's my understanding that each building is going to get two kits of Wilson Just Words. Uh, when I say building, I mean each middle school building, each high school building. Mm -hmm. We'll get two kits. And there's also a Sunday kit that is just arriving this week. And I've not done Sunday training. Um, but it was, it's, it's basic literacy skills as well. Um, and I haven't dug into that and I haven't done that training yet. So that's a possibility and it is, it is in buildings starting this week. Two kits, two kits each building. Cool. Thank you. I'll ask Amy Hamilton, our instructional coach, about that. Okay. Thank you so much, Mary. Yeah, um, I'm going to share my screen again. Hi, Mary. So, um, I was have have any of you been using Pear Deck? Did you use Pear Deck last spring? How familiar are you guys with Pear Deck? So so, I'm looking at faces right now. I I'm going to be taking the in service on that. I think that's a requirement that we have to yep. to do. So I hope to learn a little bit more how to use it better. So um, I used it this summer with my students. So my students were in Japan and I was in Arizona and different places in Topeka and it worked really, really well. So I'm a big fan of Pear Deck and I had used it before uh, leading PDs in buildings. Uh, I think online I'm even more of a fan and I had a chance when it did work to show Alyssa some things. Um, and I'm, um, I'm sad that it's not working and that may discourage some of you. Please, we'll get the glitches figured out. And I 
think I, if someone has a better platform, a less clunky platform or something like that, I'd like to know. So what we're doing now where we're putting things in the chat and that sort of thing is much easier to do in Pear Deck. Um, what it requires is that the students would zoom in and then you would take them so they'd have a zoom window and they'd have a Pear Deck window. Um, and that can get a little bit confusing for some people and some students. But um, once you get past that, it works really, really well. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about is um, the way that I've set it up. Um, so you can see on the screen where it says student write your response. You can ask, this is, this is what I really, really like. This is a huge improvement over a classroom. I ask a question, they have to answer in the, in the box next to it. If they are not answering, I can see whether they're not answering. If they're answering incorrectly, I can either say something in general, kind of like when I said, uh, I'm not meeting at midnight, that kind of thing, or I can send them a message, just a private message. So, um, and then you can decide whether you just look at those or you share all the responses to the whole group. The other thing is when you're taking notes, you on each of these slides, you can take a note. And um, at the end, when I publish the takeaways, if you put notes in the chat boxes, um, then at the end, when you get your published takeaways, you get your notes from each slide. Does that make sense? And that's, that's a huge advantage, um, um, which I think is, I mean, that's pretty powerful. So students could answer your question, they could open another little window and they could take their notes and you could see what kind of notes they're taking on what you're saying as you're working through a presentation. And it makes it very easy at the end, especially when it's connected to Google Classroom, just to click it and then they'll all get their takeaways and um, they can see what they answered and um, what notes they took. So uh, again, I'm sorry, it's not working. Maybe Travis will figure it out before we're done here. Roger, uh -huh. I have a quick question about that. When uh -huh. you do the questions on Pear Deck and you know the students choose the answer they want, then you can see like three people chose answer A and six chose B, whatever. But do you ever see what an individual student chose? So you yes. can kind of get an idea yeah. of who's understanding and who's not? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So while the students, like for instance, you guys are looking at the uh, presentation, that's what the students will see. And they'll have a, to the right, there'll be a small box. When it says down here, write your response, that's a text box on the side. But in another window, there's something called a teacher dashboard. And in the teacher dashboard, you get to see what all the students are doing. And what it's meant for me is I can, I can say to uh, a teacher that doesn't seem to, I mean, not a teacher, a student that who doesn't pay attention or isn't writing anything, I can say, hey, what's going on here? Why aren't you writing? Immediately, because as soon as you ask the question, they should start typing their answers in there. So in a classroom, it's very easy for students to zone out or not do anything. And unless you're walking around and constantly looking at their notes and their papers and those sorts of things, you can't tell. But in, it's immediate in Pear Deck to see that they're responding. And then you can also give them immediate corrections. That's the other thing. So I may see them all writing something down, but I don't really know what they're writing. And I can go in and, and correct them. So constantly in my classes, I'm saying like things like, hey, please write full sentences. It's not wanna, it's want to. Those kinds of things constantly I'm doing in classes, which I find a huge advantage. I mean, it's it's a better platform than what I can do in class, which I think is really exciting for, for that kind of thing. The other thing is when you go through the Pear Deck training, this is, this is Roger talking, they're gonna show you how to do draggables and multi, multiple, question, multiple choice questions and all these different formats. And the training turns into this thing where you start, I started feeling stressed, like I need to have a draggable in every session and da, 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 da. I've just stopped doing that. I have a template I use for my class and I'm gonna show you what, um, Cynthia Hopps made a really cool one. And then on that, I put um, the text on every single one of them for Pear Deck. So every single slide the students can write comments and I can ask questions and do the formative assessments and see what they're doing. 
And so I just keep using the same template over. And then if I want to change it and I want to have a draggable, I can just change that one slide on that. So I'm going to, I mean, you guys can do what you want. I don't, my presentations now for my classes, I use the same basically template for my class. And then I just tweak it all the time. So good. Any other questions about it? Again, I'm really sad because yeah, it's, it's, it's a downer. So hey, Roger, uh, uh -huh. Roger, Travis, I just heard from him. He's working on it. Um, okay. I'm going to pop over to the elementary PD. And then as soon as I hear from him, I'll pop back in. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. See you all in a few, in a little bit. Um, so I want to make sure you guys got um, PD points for this. So uh, not on, again, if we had the Pear Deck going, you could just click on the links. But if you go back into the presentation outside of Zoom, uh, and click on that. Make sure that you're getting the, um, if you click on that, it's that little, maybe you've already done it, but you fill out the form so that you get your PD points and they know you were here. And then I was going to have you, I had a draggable and you could put a dot on here and then I could monitor it when people were done with the um, filling it out. And then I just put this down here as something to do if people were having trouble with it or needed help or needed more time to get the form filled out. So does everybody have the form filled out? You can do it while I'm talking. All right. So we're here. This is actually what we're going to do. This is the same thing we do every year, but it's important. And we have a lot of changes because some things have, well, I feel like there's lots of changes. Some years it feels like all of it's the same information. This year it's a little bit different of all the stuff we have to do as uh, EL teachers. And Ruth's on, on with us, right, Ruth? Talk. I saw her somewhere. Is she still here? She was on with us. She was going to go back and forth between the two meetings. So um, let me see. I don't know where I she is. I forgot my ID. I'm going to put it down, but it might not be right. Oh, it's okay. That. Okay. Oh well, I shouldn't say it's okay. It's not my problem. It's Betty right? Young's problem. Right. I got She has to go through and put all the points in. I'll try to. I'll. I'll try to remember it. Okay. No. Like no problem. Your memory has like completely gone. I don't know how I got this, but my number is actually my football number from high school, followed by my football number from college. I, I think that's crazy, but it. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, we'll, I knew we'll you take, needed the help. <laughs> true. Uh, we'll have a little break and then we'll do some, uh, this is, I think this is the, for me, the most interesting and we're already starting it. Uh, how do, how do we modify our best practices sheet for an online environment? So it was definitely written because it talks about a classroom environment with um, student work displayed and these sorts of things. How do we, how do we modify that for online instruction? So I think this is the fun part for me down here. And then we'll talk a little bit about the CDMs and common assessments. Um, and I want to get your thoughts on them. So I'm going to skip this. Anyway, so uh, I've already shared this with you. So this is the checklist. It's It used to be a checklist. It's much longer now. But it's a document that has all the forms and different things. I'm going to go through each part of it. Um, I've already shared this with you. I don't know if I sent you a note. Um, let me make sure I'm not lying. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. I missed something here. Um, I didn't talk about this. The state, what they were going to do this summer, and go through the Kelpa, they're going to do online. So, um, I don't know if you guys had seen this already. I, I, sometimes it gets redundant because like five people will send out the same thing, but they're looking for people that would be interested in going through the Kelpa test and aligning it. So there's some information here. And um, uh, this form, there's a form you have to fill out to. I think it's basically volunteer. There, I guess there's some money for it. 
You get paid for the training and then for the days that you're doing the thing, they'll either pay you an honorarium or they'll pay for your sub. Okay. So. Anyway, if you're interested, I want to make sure, let's see, they need to know by Friday if you want to, if you were interested in doing that. Just, just to say it out loud, I, I have to note that, you know, we, we, got the test finished and I think all of us finished our scoring before the thing hit and then this event was going to happen this summer and I was all signed up to do it. Uh -huh. uh, they got cancelled and I understand things get cancelled in a pandemic but then it's being rescheduled to be virtual which is what it should have been in the summer anyway. I'm 100% so with you. we got our testing done and we will never be getting our scores because KSDE and KU aren't doing I'm their. beside myself having spent so many days trying to develop this thing and get i'm just beside myself that they i just want to say that out loud that and that we and it's, we're not going to get them in december even for second semester we're not going to have this nonsense i'm sorry i'm going <laughs> to thank you thank you Alyssa. for they did have um i can read your lips all the cussing going on back there i i did participate in the um um i guess it's t item item um writing for future I test item um, review. I was on the fairness panel. So I guess that's for future things. So I don't know why they were able to do those things. I don't know why they couldn't have done the other stuff as well, the Kelpa standards. Yeah, I, I haven't, yeah, I'm not gonna guess. Um, okay, let me see. So the checklist, let me make sure. This is this is what we're gonna work through and we try to update this every year. And I'm each of the slides I'm going through now are just just cutouts from this, I think. Should be. You guys are taking all my bandwidth. Well, I'm going to put it in the chat. Maybe. I'm just going to figure that out. Or, oh, yeah, and if you're following along on the slides, you can do it there. So um, the idea with this is that you can refer back to this anytime during the year um, when things come up because you may not have any transfer students right now but maybe maybe in december you'll have a transfer student and you can work down you can just go to one page and find all the information that you need it also helps us to organize our thoughts so the first thing on the school rosters i hope everyone can find their school rosters um, they're inside of a, a file that says uh, your school name and EL. Um, this is going to be really tricky this year. Um, and I'm still not 100% sure on this because we talked to Ruth. She doesn't know how to divide them out yet. And we've asked demographics between virtual students and hybrid remote students. Right? Uh, yeah. So we get paid for hybrid remote students. But if the students have elected to do virtual education, we don't get funding for them, although they still need to be supported. So um, I guess what I'm trying to say is your rosters may change and you may find out a student has gone to virtual learning and we need to know, so they, in a, they're, Anita doesn't want to exempt them because as soon as the pandemic's over and school starts, we don't want to have to go through all the paperwork of adding them back into our classes into our unto services. Have a so she's just basically putting question. them on hold. I have okay. a clarifying question, Roger. Uh -huh. um, now, the virtual students, those are the ones that are on Avondale's rosters, 
not the ones that are on our roster, but they are choosing all remote. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So hybrid and remote students, uh, there's really not a difference. It's just that you won't see some of them ever in your class. They'll get the same lessons because you'll be zooming and um, all of your lessons, even when we get to the uh, hybrid model. So everybody's starting remote. And then you'll have some, once we go to hybrid, if the parents want to bring the kids in, that's what I understand. And what Anita understood is that all students at middle school, from what the principal had told her were, was that all students at middle school have to come in at some point during the week. And I don't know if that's true. It's not. Okay, so the, I, whatever principal said that, just, I mean, it's, it's all new to everybody. So um, anyway, she's going to try to do as, as she always has weekly um, roster updates. But if you guys get different information or you find out a student's gone to virtual and we don't know about it, please let us know. Um, and Roger, course, I have a question about uh -huh. that. If those virtual kids are at um, Avondale, mm -hmm. how will we know that they need help? So they may be on, uh, wait, uh, how will we know our that group they're here, yellow that's, our group that's sitting here right now won't help them. Oh, okay. But we're, Anita is worried and so she's gonna send somebody to, not any of us, she's gonna send somebody to, or send or whatever it is, to monitor student progress, EL progress in the virtual classes. Okay. But you can do that from a desk, but it won't be any of us. It's more of a clerical thing where you just okay. go through and try to see, make a list, who's in the virtual, are they making progress, are they moving towards getting credits? That okay. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. And then, well, anyway, I think it's all in here. If you guys have questions, maybe write notes now and we'll kind of work through it, or I guess if you can. I, um, can I ask a quick one? Yeah. When when can we expect to get our first roster list? That is a good question. For some reason, I thought she had done one already. I'll, I'll follow up. And I thought Ruth uh -huh. was going to be on here with us. And just, yeah, I, I mean, you guys yeah. can appreciate she's going through a lot because they've changed. They're changing codes very quickly on the students. So from her side, she has to get from demographics, she has to get the information about what code to put in to, to track certain things. And uh, we already, I mean, we've brought it up. Anita's brought it up with demographics. I know for sure two times because I've been with her when she has. They didn't have an answer for her yet of how, how will we know whether the student is virtual or hybrid remote. So um, it's, it's something that's in progress. And I think probably the uh, special education department's working through a similar thing. Yeah. You know, Roger, I, and I don't know if this is just for our school or what, but the way I think that Kelly told us uh, when we look at our roster on Tyler Sis, it mm -hmm. has a either like a little red house or some kind of symbol next to their name to tell us which oh, one great. Those Thank yeah. you. That That's the question we had. So well, already... in, in addition, that you know, the house is the the remote, right? But if they're virtual, they shouldn't be enrolled at your school. My son, for example, is going to be virtual this year, and he'll be enrolled through Avondale. He's not enrolled at Whitson at his home elementary now, so yeah. they should enrolled at your school. That would I, that would be the difference marker. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, in the past, you could start re uh, virtual anytime you wanted. So if a student starts uh, with you and then decides they don't want to do remote or hybrid, they can switch to virtual. So, and that isn't any, that's not a new thing. The, the main thing is in the past, when they went to Avondale, we had to exempt them. So we would run the exemption forms and get them exempted so they could go to Avondale because we didn't provide services. Um, now, Anita's decided not to do that because she feels like they'll come back into the schools once once the we, once we get a vaccine. Yeah. Uh, and so I'll talk to Ruth. I didn't know there was a red house. Thank you. Um, so to get a red house, there's some kind of code somewhere that she can pull. Maybe she already knows. I haven't. I didn't talk to her yesterday about it. 
Um, these are our levels of service. Um, okay, I was going to have you uh, circle, you know, give you a pen and Pear Deck to circle which ones have to take Kelpa. Uh, and I don't know if you guys know this. I, I turned it off, I hope. So the way the district had it set up, anybody could annotate on anything. So I don't know if you've been in meetings. So at Highland Park, someone started drawing all over the slides that somebody was presenting. And uh, the presenter had no idea how to turn it off or clear it or do anything with it. So um, if do you guys know how to annotate? OK, uh, so uh, at the bottom, when you're doing a Zoom, in your bar there where it has mute and stop video, there's one that says annotate. It'll put a little bar up at the top. And you can pick your color and you can circle things. So these are the right answers. The people that have to take the Kelpa are active students and um, exempt students. Monitor transitional and uh, we have a new icon. It's a black one. It's already confusing some people. Um, the black icon is um, they've tested out and they're off monitor status. All right. Okay, I can't hear anything now. Did I mute everybody? I can talk. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Alyssa, have you used the annotate? Can you yes, I have this? played with it, but you, you don't have it the... turned on. I can't. No, you don't have okay, it turned good. on for. Um... Yeah, well, I turned it off on purpose. So the default would be that it would be on. So I'm just telling you that because once the students find that out, there'll be some mischief. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this, uh, just so you guys know, the black icons already confusing counselors. Um, teachers are going to see it too and assume that the student's an ESL student, but um, what we need them to know is that they've already tested out and they've done everything they need to do and they're out of the program. Um, so most of their issues in class, we would suspect, won't be language issues. And if you hover over the icon, it'll tell you exactly what it is. Yeah. It'll say test out. Yeah. I, um, Anita's trying to get it out to principals and counselors. They're the ones that need to know it. And, and we'll get it to teachers also. Uh, but we'll just see. I, uh, there, were, uh, there were arguments for having a black icon and arguments against it. If you feel that uh, EL services is somehow stigmatized, which is easy to do because I'm in lots of meetings and they can't separate EL from SPED. And so the students get stigmatized. Um, that would be a reason not to have it. On the other hand, um, I don't know what the argument was for. Uh, oh, because um, sometimes students that had tested out of the program were getting retested when they moved from elementary to middle school or middle school to high school. Um, because I don't know why. Because they spoke with an accent, maybe. I don't know. And I know we also wanted to be able to track how, have some way of, of pulling them and seeing how they were doing once they exited services, right? Are they being successful? Are they making honor roll? Are they graduating? That's another thing we talked about with Anita is if we don't have a, a marker on them, we don't have a way to pull that data. Right. Okay. Oh, why did I cross out transitional? Anybody? There are none this year. We don't have Kelpa scores, so all of the students that were on transitional are now second year monitor. And uh, we don't have any new. After after we get the Kelpa scores, we will we could have some transitional students. It doesn't make a bit of difference this year as far as funding because they'll all be considered active students right now. Will we get Kelpa scores before the Kelpa test rolls around so that we don't test students? who passed it last year. I'm making a note. Yes. Uh, 
I don't know the. Uh, I don't know how confident KSD is that they'll get it done. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, this is the transfer in and out. It hasn't changed. The form hasn't changed. Um, I don't know who made this a million years ago. I think we could make it easier one than put it in Excel, but that's how they have it. I haven't messed with it. Um, so if they come to your school, a new student comes to your school or a student leaves, and then this is the form that we send to another school district if they transfer to another school. It's important, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, new students. So this is, there's, so the students have been coming to, not coming, uh, have been Zooming with Ruth and she gives them the oral part of the IPT and sends them on their way. We don't have a way right now with the IPT to give the uh, reading and writing portion. Uh, and we don't have permission to do it online. Um, we got permission to do the speaking part. So you may get new students and they will only have had the oral part and qualified that way. The ish, sometimes we have students that do well orally and then they go ahead and test them on the reading and writing just to make sure. And that's not happening right now. So I don't, until we go to a, uh, the hybrid model, we can't physically give them the test. Um, Roger, what does that mean then? Does that mean that there are students who might be not receiving services who should be? I mean, is she? Yeah, I mean, the vast majority of students don't pass. I mean, that our students didn't pass the oral part. It's a pretty good screener just on the oral part, but just understand we aren't getting the reading and writing. So it could be a kid speaks English really well, shows up and can't read or write very well in English, and it has something to do with language. Right, so, so then where are they being placed? So if they pass the oral part, we won't, they'll, they'll, they'll have tested out of services. Okay. But we have, we have a process where the gen ed teacher thinks it might be a language issue and mm -hmm. that's why they're not doing well in class then we can reassess them yeah okay. so um it's just to be a little bit different this year than than normal and uh Lene, since it's new to you um usually what happens is uh this office will give them the oral part say they qualify for services and then send the paperwork to you and some point in the uh, with it, it's supposed to be within 10 days, you will give them the uh, reading and writing test on the IPT to determine their level. Because that's the other issue we have. They may qualify, but we don't know if they're an ESL 1 or an ESL 3. Or whether they're, well, we can figure out if they're newcomers because we talk to them. So that usually isn't an issue. But it could be, I guess it could be a little bit of an issue if they need to be working with Angie. Because at middle school, all of the level zeros, the lowest level students go and work with Angie Shelton at Jardine. So, so um, if they if they don't pass the oral, and if we're in a hybrid situation where we do see them, then we go ahead and test them for the reading and writing. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. if not, if we're in a remote situation, we we'll, just don't know their level, right? We just don't know, and we'll just put them. They just need to get. I mean, we need to put them in one of the one of your classes, and then if you feel like it. I mean, you'll know right. I'm pretty sure you'll know fairly quickly whether you need to what level they might be. Yeah. Um, the parent notification letter. So in the past, we had you guys print it and hand it to each student to take home. Um, Anita's going to have to mail those out this year, so you don't have anything to do with the parent notification letters. And uh, when a student, a new student enrolls, that's for all the uh, current students we have. If a new student enrolls, obviously they get it right away and they explain to them what services are available. Um, 
and I'm going to talk about the ILP in a second. Um, the IPT, we just, we've just we already gone through that, so that's why this is all crossed out, because these aren't the things that are happening um, that typically would. Uh, the parent notification letter, we'll get it sent home by September 18th. There's a legal requirement that all parents have to be notified every year that their student is receiving services. Uh, the individual learning plans. So nothing, we, we don't have new data to put into them. So the plans are the same. So right now you don't need to make, we don't need to make new ILPs because they should be getting the same levels of services as they did last year with the same accommodations. The only thing that we need to change is the grade level. So they hopefully will have advanced a year. Um, so if you guys can get into your ILPs and just update the grade level. The other thing is we do have some students that transferred and we need to add for the middle school teachers, we need to get the fifth grade ILPs your fifth graders ILPs to you. And uh, for high school, we need to get the ninth graders ILPs to you because they're in different places. So I have a note and I'll, I'll, I'll start to work on that. Um, if, if you don't get it, just send me an email with the names of who you need and I'll, I'll make sure it happens. The, the, it's too bad, but the ILPs are all chopped up by school. And so it's finding what, like for the middle school, the finding what elementary school they were in and then getting into that sheet and grabbing, grabbing the data from last year. Okay. Uh, we're trying to get that done um, by September 30th. Um, it's, and honestly, I, I don't, do you guys see it as an issue? I don't think it's going to be a big deal as long as you get into your ILPs and just, uh, delete the seniors that graduated and update the grade levels. And then we'll get the ninth graders and the new six, the new ninth graders and the new sixth graders put in there. Any questions so on if, that? Yeah, if we're in a middle school, do we need to do anything with our eighth graders last year? Do we need to delete those or? or... Yeah, just delete them. And you have, you have the information to give to the ninth grade teachers. Wait, 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 don't delete them yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to go back through and use all the formulas and make make the That's forms right. like I normally do. I don't want to do that. All right. You'll tell us when to delete them. Yeah. Or uh, highlight them in uh, yellow, and then it'll be easier for me to find. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, nothing's changed with the monitor status. Um, it's it's the same. Same thing. Um, the IL, all of this is the same, except we don't have a new COPA score to put in. And that's usually what we've used to move them up a level or change their accommodation. Exemptions from services. So in the past, we had, you know, this in person meeting. I, I do want to point out that it's not. The ESL teacher doesn't decide who exempts. It's got to be a team based decision. So need to talk to the ESL teacher. Uh, I'm sorry. Also, it's not the principal's decision. If a parent calls and says, I don't want my kid in here, the principal's not supposed to just pull them out. They're supposed to talk to you guys about it. Um, the, the only thing that we really changed this year is that you can use Zoom to ho hold a meeting. And it's the EL teacher's job to set up the Zoom. So you'll lead the Zoom meeting with the principal and the parent and any gen ed teachers. So it starts looking like an IEP, a little bit like an IEP meeting. Do you guys have any questions about that? Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm also supposed to let you know, right now it's not gonna be an issue, but if they exempt, get exempted from services, they lose the bus pass they get from our department. That's the financial thing that changes. Um, oh, once it's completed, you need to scan an, e an email back to the data clerk, to Ruth, to 
that that sometimes doesn't happen. So she doesn't get the paperwork to know who to uh, change their status to exempt. Ruth, you got anything to add to that? Um, no. Hello, everyone. Um, no, I mean, everything stayed the same. Um, as you mentioned, it's just um, as long as we're on the same boat and uh, everyone is informed of what's going on and I get the um, the, uh, the correct paperwork so I can make the changes in Tyler Sisk, um, everything should stay the same. I have a question. Yes. If I have a student who is going to be moving over to Hope Street, then I fill a stuff out for that and send that over to you. Um, when are they moving? Well, it's in discussion right now, but I expect her to move for the start of the school year. Okay, so you wouldn't have to do a transfer out form because they're not starting the year with you. Got it. Um, but if you could inform the family that they have to exempt from services mm -hmm. in order for them to attend um, Hope Street because they do not have those services there. That's fine. Who will do that then if it's not me who does that exemption? Um, more than likely the school should contact us and we get the process done. Okay. It's between um, the exempt site and the EL office. That's the okay. only time that we intervene. Got it. Oh, I got an email from uh, Travis True. So at the break, we'll get through this and then we'll take a break. At the break, I'm gonna turn everything off, basically it says, and try to re-sign in. He's, uh, he thinks it might be my cash. Okay, uh, Ruth, there was a question about when they can get rosters. Um, I will try to get those as early as um, next week before, hopefully before Wednesday. Um, but I will try my best to get them out by the end. We're like on swamp with meetings today and tomorrow, so hopefully by Monday or Tuesday. Right. Yeah, but um, in the secondary side, I'm not seeing a lot of new students other than a, maybe a couple in high school. So most of the rosters pretty much stay the same. Okay, that's good and we can, from our office, can we see, um, we can look up who's at Avondale West? Correct, yes. And that'll tell us who's gone virtual. Yes. Learning. Okay. That anyway. is my understanding if, um, if anybody decides to go virtual, they'll have to be enrolled at um, either Avondale West or Hope Street. So if you guys hear about students, that other students say, well, they went virtual, let us know because that may be another way they're thinking they'll just get out of school. But we can then look them up in Avondale and make sure they did enroll virtually. Yes, and we can count them. All right, let's see what's next. Uh, reinstatements, so if a, this is what we're trying to avoid with the virtual students. We're not exempting them, so we won't have to do reinstatements later. But if you have students that were exempted Let's say the student went to Hope Street and then came back to Topeka West, we'd have to do a reinstatement, that kind of thing. Um, and then September 20 counts. So the most important thing is we're going to we're going to make these required on September 25th because we, you know, our timeline's gotten super compressed. Um, the uh, I I didn't get a middle school schedule. So for the high school schedule, everybody has the same schedule. And I don't think it's going to change before September 20. I don't think we'll go to regular classes by September 20. So, well, it's actually September 20 is Sunday. So that week of September 21st through 25th is the week where we count the minutes. And all the high schools should have the same schedule. As far as I know, it should look something like this, right? Even, um, even if we go into hybrid, we're going to have the same schedule for Topeka High. Correct. That's what we've been told too. Okay, but the only, as I understood it right now, well, no, 
middle schools will have the same schedule across the middle schools. I saw it the other day, but I and I will send it to you when I. Okay, if you send it to me, I'll go ahead and get the sheets made up. Okay. And then I, we, everybody okay. can work from the same. It's just like last year. Just you just put your school name, and it's, so I guess the template would be done already, which is something. Yeah, and I'll tell you right now. I don't know if this makes any difference, but the first, first and second hour, those are the on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Those are the classes that meet you know, at the beginning of the day, they are extra, extra long because they sort of include seminar oh, okay. time for seminar kinds of things, but it's, it's all just, it's all just dumped into first and second hour. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, and I, I guess I, the other thing I wanted to say about it is the state understands perfectly well how crazy it is trying to do September 20 counts so fast and virtual students. And there's so many different learning like districts have decided to do different ways of um, providing services and that sort of thing so the reason i'm saying that is uh, i don't think their expectations that is that the forms and all the things that we turn in will be a hundred percent a hundred hundred percent accurate like we've done in the past there's some wiggle room there the other thing i want to point out is there's two funding methods there's our sheets, the ones that we do, and then there's just a head count. And the state will give us whichever one pays the most. So it, um, I, I, Anita's asked, all the directors have asked, can we just do the head count this year? Because it's gonna be bananas. And yeah, it, it'll be tough. How do you know a kid's, how do you know a kid isn't in I, I don't know. A kid doesn't show up for the week to any of their online classes. Does that mean we don't count their minutes? You know, those kinds of things. It just, it's, it's complicated. So be good to yourself. Don't stress out too much. Just do the best you can. Hey, Roger, when I go uh, to click that link in the um, slideshow you that you shared, the mm -hmm. spreadsheet, I, we don't have access to yet. So when you, when you want us to start on that, make sure you give us access. Is that September 25th, well, like the day that we need to get them to you? Or is that the day that the state needs them? Because remember last year you made us give them to you like the week before? Yeah. So you guys so, have time to. Right. So no, that's. That's our uh, deadline or that's your deadline? That's your deadline. Okay. Yeah. So the, the 25th is the last day of that, um, that the count week and um, I, I know the last two years we've gotten the, so the forms go from us up the hill to Burnett and they actually um, create some kind of package and put all the minutes up and send it all off. And so um, the last two years we got that done way earlier than we had in the past. So anyway, we're doing the best we can. Um, Maybe I'm giving you too long an answer. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to write a note about sharing the... Pam, do you have any idea when they're going to get you guys' schedules out? Or is it, is, it, is it published somewhere? I can't find it anywhere. I think Jill said she just sent it to you. Okay, great. So I'll get your template made and sent to you. And then you just have to change the names and put the, the teachers' names in there. It sounds like Chase has some t new teachers that have their endorsements. Um, so let us know. Um, Do we need to be asking again who has an endorsement at our school? So, yeah, I'm. Mm, we uh, we got a note from. We already asked. Uh, central office for it. Let me uh, let me follow up on that. So they're supposed to send it in, but it's it's. I'm trying to remember. It, I feel like it's almost an honor system. Anyway, I can't. I can't remember. There's some glitch there because sometimes you guys find there's people in the building. Oh, I know what it is, um, and it won't be an issue. There used to be lots of people that had started doing their certification. 
And so we got to count their minutes and now we don't. And there was no way for the central office to know who those people were, but we don't have that anymore as far as the state is concerned. So yeah, I'll get that list to you. Yeah. Roger, so Roger right now it's either you have completed it or you haven't completed it. Yeah, either, not in progress. Right. Either you have the endorsement on your license or you don't. Yeah. Roger, um, this is Veronica. I have a question. So um, our school, they're still working on our schedules. And I, I, I had sent an email um, to the principals and um, to a I CC'd Anita of, of about 20 students that I haven't had on yet on my schedule. So, um, and we have also a new counselor. So, you know, keeping her abreast of, of how to add students and which ones need in our classroom sometimes is, is a challenge. What, what do you want us to do? What procedure do you want us to do if we see that we still have a few hands, hands full of students that aren't on our schedules, aren't on our, in our classrooms? Well, so that hasn't changed in the sense that we have to provide them services. Well, yeah, I understand that. But I mean, do do we you want us to do you think Anita would want us to um, keep with keep sending emails to the teachers of the students that aren't on our list and CC her or do we need to just CC her? Oh, send it no, to I mean, her? wait, no, you don't. Anita doesn't have anything to do with it. That's a building thing. OK, so you need to just keep working with your principals and counselors to get their schedules amended. All right. Thank you. Yeah. In a similar vein, we've got, I think, three upperclassmen who are doing either TCALC or Washburn Tech. And as a result, um, there is no practical right. way to give them minutes without uh, just tearing apart their full right. Right. goals. Yeah. Um, what's the recommended exemption? We get them an exemption. OK. Um, and the main thing on that is that you can be working on the exemption during the September 20, just so there's not a sheet turned in for them if they're not getting services. Does that make sense? Okay, so so do, just don't make a sheet, don't claim them in any way, even though they're on our roster? Right, and, okay. and try to get the exemption done. But the exemption requires a Zoom meeting with a principal, the parent, the kid, da, 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 yeah. right? So I don't know if you can pull that all off in 10 days, basically, or whatever it is. Um, I don't think anything else has changed too much. I'll, um, yeah, I guess we're gonna, the, Lene, these are the instructions on how we have to do this. It gets complicated. I'll definitely come and help you. Um, right now, the thing that you guys could be working on is getting your school info sheets updated. And that's where we do put the endorsed teachers and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, I'm, I'll probably make a new video for this because um, the old video we had from, I think Renee did it, right? Or Casey, or I can't remember. Um, we'll, we'll do an updated one because uh, the way the elementary does it and the way the secondary, there was one video in the past, but the, the video was really elementary, aimed towards elementary. So hopefully we'll get that done. It's on my list. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Anita already stole the thunder. If uh, your paras should be working with Dylan, as far as if they need help with anything or questions, or uh, if they want to know where they're supposed to be on a PD day, all of that stuff can work through Dylan. Um, and different buildings have different so the expectation of the state is that you'll meet with them weekly, the paras, and find out what's going on with the students as far as giving them services. Um, but in some buildings, the paras kind of do their own thing. And the teachers don't, the teachers talk to them, but they don't have, I mean, they're not, they're not in daily contact with them. Um, so sometimes um, it just, I don't know, different buildings have different relationships. And sometimes the paras want to be more or less independent and do their own thing and work with who they want to work with and that those sorts of things. 
So anyway, we hope this will help because we always have questions, where should the paras go? And they always end up going with the SPED, SPED folks. And what we're hoping to do is create some, we don't, well, this is the last PD for this year, but in the future with that, we'd have a place where we could maybe set up some para educator, EEL para educator PDs specifically for them, those kinds of things. And then this is the other things uh, Dylan can do to help you. And like Anita said, in the past, he had to work with all the migrant kids, but we don't have any migrant funding now. So he's, we're, his position's still there, but he can, he doesn't have to prioritize my, my uh, migrant kids anymore. He can prioritize whatever help you guys need. So I'm trying to think, he's, he's uh, well, last um, spring he was helping in different classrooms and, and those sorts of things. So. All right, it is our break time. I'm going to shut everything down on my computer and clear out all the cache and all those things, and hopefully Pear Deck will work when we get back. Okay, so I have, so can we come back at 10? Sound good? Okay. Yes. See you guys. So, so we'll need to log out of Zoom and, and re enter, re, re ask to. Uh, um, yeah, I'll have to admit you again. Okay, thanks. <laughs>